Why, hello there. Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools. On today's episode, if you want to get an extremely level surface off of uneven terrain, keep on watching. Let's get started. For this project, we are starting with a very uneven patch of dirt, and I'm going to be showing you the step-by-step -step process on how to get a perfectly level floor system for a shed, a playhouse, a dog kennel, a greenhouse, and so much more. I want a floor system that's not only level, but a perfect 10 feet by 12 foot section, which is why I'm first hammering stakes into the ground and measuring them appropriately. But keep in mind that the 10 and 12 foot measurements are important, but they're not as important as the cross dimensional measurement. That will guarantee that our structure is actually square and we'll get to that in more detail later on in the video. Now I want this structure to be as low to the ground as humanly possible, which is why I can't use a standard concrete foundation block, which is why I'm going with these. This is tough block from Build Tough. These are perfect foundation blocks for many different types of exterior structures. All I have to do is place my 4x4 pressure treated block right in the dead center of our tough block and we have a perfect beam system for our structure. You may have noticed that it took a laser level to figure out the measurement at the very top of our post. And if there's any measuring device that I would highly suggest having on a hand when doing a foundation like this is a laser level because it makes it extremely easy to determine exactly the height of each post. The first measurement I took off of the top of the post was nine and three quarter inch. And as long as each one of these posts measure up to the exact same measurement, then we have a very level surface all the way across. The problematic issue with this site is that there's a large veritable height difference between one corner to the next. After all four corners are accounted for, I do take a 10 foot two by four and stretch that across from one side to the other on both sides. Now, that, from just the looks of it, might not look extremely level, but when you get up close, boy, that is quite level, which is a good thing, but we got a lot of space over here. So I'm gonna cut that one down as much as I possibly can the lowest I could go with these posts are two and a half inches, and I actually dug that first one down just a bit to try and relieve some of that extreme height difference between one side to the other, which did help by removing a total of five inches of veritable height difference. By screwing two 10 footers at these locations helps the measuring process because it guarantees that I have perfect 10 foot sections and make sure that our cross dimensional measurement is equal. With our floor footprint accounted for, I can now start determining exactly where all of our other tough blocks need to go. The center of our tough blocks are spaced out four feet exactly, which means that each 12 foot section has four tough blocks. We do need four rows of structural support, and since this section is 10 feet wide, I place a mark at 38 inches on both sides of our two x four. I'm using some exterior marking spray paint to note exactly where each footing needs to be placed because we're going to be doing some excavation once I have all the layout accounted for. Once we have all 16 footing locations marked, I can then proceed to excavation. Now this soil is extremely loose and it's very hard to actually find stiff and stable soil. This could be due to a number of variables, but keep in mind that you do want to dig down till you hit some type of stiff bedrock, or at least cohesive dirt that we're going to be filling in with rock. For these footing locations, we need a very stable base, and for that, we're going to be using 5 8 crushed minus. This is a crushed rock with small particles in it, so it actually compacts extremely well. So much so that you can easily compact it with a hand tamper. I wet it down a bit prior to tamping, and once it's actually moist, I then take the hand taper and just go around a few times to compress the rock and to solidify it into a proper footing base. I continue the same exact process from footing to footing to footing, starting with excavation, rock, 
tamping, and then placing our footing right on top. Now, I didn't realize how much rock I was actually going to need because I actually had to dig down much deeper than expected. So, I had to get a second trip of this crushed rock, which constitutes that I needed one full yard of crushed rock just for these 16 footing locations. So please keep that in mind on your project and hopefully you don't have to dig down as deep as I did on this one. Once we had all of our crushed rock accounted for and our base was good, we can finally move on to our footings. Our four corner locations are gonna be done slightly differently than all the rest because we've already done the hard work with these locations. I actually placed a bit more rock than needed in these locations because I wanted to level it out properly by giving it just a little shimmy all the way down. Once you're happy with the levelness of your tough block corners, you can then reposition the posts that you already placed, and as long as you level them appropriately, your 2x4 should be level as well. For the remaining footings, I found it much easier just to level out the tough block, and once it was completely level, I then was able to take my measurement off of that. Then cut our pressure treated 4x4, check our measurement to make sure that we're at the proper height, and as long as at the proper height, then we can move on to the next one. I go about double checking our cross dimensional measurement in order to guarantee that we have a square structure, and as long as the cross dimensional measurement is the same on both sides, we can proceed to all the other footings. As you're trying to figure out the remaining post sizes, the easiest way to think about it with a laser level is to make sure that you know the exact height needed when you place your tape measure right on top of each post. Mine was 9.5 inches, and as long as I hit my 9.5 inches at the top of each one, I knew that the structure was perfectly level. In order to properly connect our post to our beams, we need the proper bracket. And for that, we have this galvanized post cap, which is the appropriate bracket to use in this application. I'm also using inch and a half long galvanized screws on both sides of the bracket for proper fastening. But now that our brackets are in place, we need our beams. And for our beams, they come from Homestead Supplier. Now the floor system and the actual unit that's gonna be going on top of it are from Homestead Supplier. And I'm not gonna give it away just yet as to what we're gonna be placing on this floor system, but I would love to hear everyone's guesses in the comment section below. This floor system kit comes with the beams, the floor joists, and the sheathing that goes right on top. And the best thing about it is that everything comes to the exact length needed, so there's no cuts needed in any of the floor system, which is pretty amazing and a huge time saver. These 4x4 beams come in 8 foot and 4 foot long sections, which obviously means we need one 4 foot and one 8 foot long section to take care of our 12 foot long section. Once I have one side taken care of, I move on to the other side, and just keep in mind that you do want your 4x4 beam to be aligned perfectly with the end of your post. After I have both side sections of our structure fully secured, I then reposition our laser level, and then start taking care of our center footings. This is the same exact process as before, making sure that it's properly leveled on both sides, but the one key element in this circumstance is that you also want to make sure it's aligned with the 2x4 above it. That 2x4 gives us a perfect end point on both sides of our structure, especially with the fact that our beams and floor joists are cut at the exact length needed. Now you may have noticed these tough blocks in a past project when I did a walkway foundation and I loved their system so much that I wanted to incorporate them on this project which is why they are also the sponsor of this week's video. These tough blocks from Build Tough are a multi-purpose foundation system used for an array of different home improvement projects. From a low profile deck to garden shed, landing pathways and so forth, you can have so many different options to choose from when trying to support a structure. Plus, they're 100% recycled plastic and they can hold up to over 1,700 pounds with just one tough block. That's pretty remarkable, and if you're interested in them for a project of your own, then check out the link in the description box below. Moving back onto the project at hand, we have all of our beams and our footings taken care of. Now let's just do our final double check on our cross dimensional measurement. We have 187 and a half approximately, maybe a little over on one side, and then as we place the other measurement, we are at 187 and a half. 
approximately. That means that this structure is extremely square and ready for our floor joists. But before we move on to floor joists, I would highly suggest applying some type of weed barrier below the surface. That way, no weeds will actually grow up through into our unit, and it also provides a way for the moisture to get through. Once we have that applied, I can then proceed to our floor joists. And our floor joists should be set at 16 inches on center. And by making a mark on both sides of our beams, I can easily align every single floor joist as needed. Keep in mind that all these 2x4s are cut to the appropriate length and they're labeled. They are labeled as FJ, which means, of course, floor joists. The floor kit also comes with these 3 inch long ring shank galvanized nails. Now these are extremely strong and durable nails which you can hammer each one individually in place or you can pick up these ring shank nails for your framing nailer. Now this does make it a lot easier to secure each one of these boards which means that it's a huge time saver and since we've spent so much time and energy just getting to this point I much appreciate any way that we can speed up this process. But of course with any nailer, especially the framing nailer, make sure you're wearing proper eye protection because you never know if anything gets projectiled out in the wrong direction. The nails that come with the kit are ring shank nails and if you didn't know, ring shank is there so the pull out strength is much more significant than a standard smooth nail. After we have all our floor joists nailed down, we can move on to our sheathing. Now this sheathing is tongue and groove, which is perfect for a floor system like this. Plus, each one of these panels is also cut to the specific length needed, which means that all we have to do is lay this out on our floor joists to make it the easiest puzzle installation that I've ever had to work with. The floor kit also comes with two inch long nails, which I do set a few in place just to make sure that everything is aligning properly. And once I can guarantee that all panels are positioned appropriately, I can then pound those nails all the way in and proceed to installing the remainder. I make sure to hammer each nail every six to eight inches as I go across the floor joist. And yes, this would have been faster with a nail gun, but I didn't have one for this type of installation. But with those nails fully installed, I'm proud to say that we are done with this floor system. A truly level floor system is a beautiful thing and something that takes so much time and energy to do. That's why it's extremely important to do your due diligence at the beginning to have a perfectly supported structure. And as you can see, we are experiencing true level over this entire structure. And that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah.